And I think what really drew us to the story was Manning Marable's Pulitzer Prize winning biography on Malcolm X, uh, A Life of Reinvention. And in that, this gentleman is, 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 is cited um, uh, when the question as to who killed him comes up. Uh, and then Abdul Rahman is uh, there to tell his side of the story, the research that led him to believe what he believes. And so we folded those two sources together and, and, and we got a six part series out of it. So Rachel, how does your series focus in on these questions surrounding uh, the assassination of Malcolm X in a way that previous uh, treatments of this material hasn't? Well, I think we're the first really comprehensive look at the question in this sort of world of, of television and film. Um, it has been dealt with somewhat in print, but nobody's really looked at it this exhaustively in television. And what we try to do is, is combine the kind of true crime investigation of the case with a biography of this man that mm -hmm. so many people of this generation know of, but not that much about. Yeah, we know that, because for a lot of people, too many, I think, is a fashion statement. <laughs> Um, I mean, and that's not a criticism, but that's, you know, I think as you get farther and farther out from the death, there's a certain segment of the population that don't really know him. Um, one of the things I found wonderful in, in watching clips um, from your series is that you are just instantly reminded again what a powerful um, order he was, um, that it, it wasn't just some created, that he had this aura, and it was why he was able to reach so many people, which I think, so watching a lot of this material for the first time, I think people will be struck by that. Do you feel like you are answering those burning questions that, 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 um, that people have had for so for so long? Are people going to walk away from, from the series saying, hmm? Yes, I believe so. And I think that's what um, makes this series unique amongst uh, the other works that have um, gone before it, is that we give you a sense of satisfaction that, um, you know, you know the story, you know what happened. We kind of get, get to the bottom of it. And I think that after this series, I think it will be definitive yeah there's always you know answers that will go on un, uh unanswered but you know um in general i think we answer those crucial questions that people want to know you know I, I look here's the thing i want people to watch it but i want you to tell me something that you can tell me without saying well now i don't need to watch it that you feel like uh you get a chance to explore um uh, for the you know in a way for the first time that maybe folks really didn't even no. Well, without giving too much away, what you're going to find out is that um, it really, there were many people who uh, knew the story, but um, for one reason or another, um, just didn't go public with it. It was more well known than people know. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, and then, it was what, what you might call a, a, a well kept but public secret. Um, in certain communities um, uh, as to who killed Malcolm X. Yeah, and, I, and you you do talk to at least one of the men that was convicted. Uh, we hear from him hear in from archival, him. and but definitely we feature uh, one of the men who was, we, we believe, to be wrongfully convicted, mm -hmm. Muhammad Aziz. As filmmakers, what is the biggest challenge in putting together something that, like this that you think it's it is a well-known story, a very well-known figure. What's the challenge you face of, of putting together um, this story? You're using, you have archival footage, but obviously if you're going to answer this question, you've got to rely on, get source information from other people. You know, how easy, how difficult was that? Well, one of the challenges was that so many people have passed away. And literally, as we would be looking somebody up, we would find out they had just passed. And mm -hmm. that was a challenge. It was over 50 years ago, and um, and memories are often faulty, even for those who are still alive, because they're elderly. Um, so that was definitely one of the challenges. But the other really was honestly the kind of embarrassment of riches we had to work with. Malcolm was such an extraordinary, as you say, orator and human being and presence, and there's just an extraordinary amount of uh, amazing footage of him. And so choosing what we were going to use and what we were going to leave out, mm -hmm. believe it or not, six hours didn't feel like enough. Yeah, with, with that subject matter, I can understand that. Um, was his family 
involved much in? Yeah, we actually sat down with Ilyasa Shabazz, mm -hmm. his daughter, um, who's also um, been out front and representing and promoting the film. So she is she is a part of it. Um, um, the other sisters were a little more difficult to reach, but um, we we have the family's support. Yeah. Um, I think Ilyasa is the one that is much is. Uh, I think much more sort of used to dealing with, uh, you know, the media and, yeah. and the, the interest in her father in a, in a much more consistent way. Yeah, I, I believe so. But it's, it's, you know, like any family, they have their differences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do know family. Was it important to you all here to get it right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was, you know, not so much a challenge, but a real obligation, you know, and, and why it took as long as it did was we wanted to make certain we got it right. We, uh, to your point about what's new, we uncovered new evidence, mm -hmm. we found new people, and we just had to really follow those stories to their rightful end mm -hmm. that added time and, and, and patience <laughs> to the project. Yeah. Say, for example, working with getting some of this information from law enforcement. I mean, did you you dealt with the NYPD? How easy or difficult was it to get people to be cooperative, to open up with you know what they had, what what was presented or not presented, that kind well, of we thing. We interview a um, a former detective with the New York City Police Department's undercover unit, which was called Bossy, the Bureau of Special Services and Investigation. Um, and you know, he he was extremely open with us. Mm -hmm. um, some might be surprised at how open he was with us, and he had a lot of differences and issues with the way the NYPD handled the case. So the biggest challenge was getting complete records because the records are that are out there and that have been made public are partial, um, and it's hard to know what's missing. Mm -hmm. So there was there was a lot of digging, and we came up with some new material, and there's some stuff that's still out there. Yeah. We also uh, spoke with the district attorney who uh, prosecuted the case, or at least the investigation, um, and were able to kind of cross-reference what we heard from the New York Police Department um, and the prosecution. In addition, we found the FBI agent who was assigned mm -hmm. to Malcolm during this period and got to speak with him about how the Federal Bureau of Investigation handled Malcolm and the case uh, of his assassination. So we put all three parts of the criminal investigation together um, in this series. And are you satisfied with the film, essentially, that you ended up with? Or do you still feel like, I mean, I, there's something else I would have loved to have had, but I, I didn't quite, we didn't quite get it. Well, this man has been on the case for 30 years, and I'm curious to know how satisfied he is. Uh, I, I think they did a superb job as uh, directors um, to take to take this uh, story that, you know, quite frankly, has been done before, um, but nowhere near the kind of skill and um, and. Um, I would say expertise mm -hmm. that this team brought to it. I believe it's a masterpiece, mm -hmm. you know, and I, be I believe that you know that's not over the top. I think when uh, people see it, they'll see the 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 attention to detail and the exhaustive treatment. It's never been, nothing like this has ever appeared on television before. It's stunning. Why is it important to you that this story be told properly? Because this man never got his full due. Um, he, he paid a tremendous price for what he believed in, and he was a very principled man, and he said that if I'm to be remembered for anything, I want to be remembered for being sincere. And he didn't have to um, go to the Autobahn ballroom that afternoon. He could have taken another direction. Uh, he could have stayed in Africa. Many African leaders you know, uh, agreed to take him in and give him a, a position in their cabinets. And he said, no, my struggle here is in the United States. And he felt that he had, uh, uh, you know, a certain wrong that he was trying to correct. And for doing that, it cost him his life. And I felt that, and I've always felt that um, this is the least that we can do for him mm -hmm. since he did so much for us. All right. 
Thank you all for being with us this afternoon. The documentary, well, it's not a, well, it's a documentary, it's six-part series. That's right. Um, Who Killed Malcolm X on Netflix now. And this website, I'm going to give out, arc, is that slash media dot net? It's hyphen. Hyphen, hyphen, thank you. Hi, yes, hyphen dot, uh, dot net. And what can I find at that website? Well, that's the production company, our mm -hmm. production company, that, that made the documentary series. So you'll see uh, a link to the website yeah. uh, for the documentary series, as well as a lot of the other work that we've done. Yeah, because you guys have been very, very busy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you all very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Sandra, for having us. Just days after that interview, the Manhattan DA's office announced it will review the convictions of the three Nation of Islam members held responsible for the 1965 shooting death of Malcolm X at the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem. And we will, of course, keep you posted. We'll be right back.